Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here, friends. Again, uh, it's going to be CRISPR Therapeutics, of course, because uh, tomorrow is the Padufa date. I'm recording this at 7 p.m. Uh, on the 7th of December, 2023. Uh, 8th is when the Padufa date is, and uh, you're going to see action. So I thought, uh, why not look at two things that we have not yet spoken about, which is also still uh, circulating in the market. These are information that we need to have as CRISPR shareholders so that if we have to make a spot decision on the 8th, we have this at the back of our mind. Again, everything that I'm telling you is my personal opinion, not financial advice. So please do your own due diligence uh, before you make any decision. That said, full disclosure, I have 100 shares of CRISPR Therapeutics and I have a covered call on it with a strike price of 80 and expiry in January. So I'm kind of locked in at this point of time. I also have 600 shares of Bluebird, which is free. I haven't uh, been able to sell a covered call with the kind of uh, margins that I was looking for or premium that I was looking for. So uh, that's the disclosure I would like to make. Of course, uh, ArcG is the other thing that I have. So what am I going to talk about in today's video? First thing, I'm going to talk about a cancer scare that's being spoken about um, uh, with regard to sickle cell disease um, with um, a treatment similar to Exacel. And um, uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what it is and what it means. Uh, second thing that I want to talk to you about is sizing how much money CRISPR Therapeutics is going to make uh, with the approval of Exacel. And so far, we have not done that. So I'm going to talk to you about the entire history of the deal between CRISPR and Vertex and we'll see how it evolved. Most recently Vertex bought 10% extra uh, profits by paying money to uh, CRISPR therapeutics and there is a, a responsibility for CRISPR to deliver certain things in the United States which again could uh, come into a picture because of the IP issue. So with that said, uh, I think uh, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. The collaboration between CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex dates back to a long time. Uh, and first, I want to take you through uh, their uh, collaboration, how it happened. And uh, after that, I will be uh, talking about the, um, the revenue uh, potential. And finally, I'll talk about the sickle cell uh, uh, treatment and cancer uh, scare. So this is the sequence of my presentation. So first, let me uh, uh, take you across to the history of this deal, uh, which will give you an idea of how the revenue and cost sharing metamorphosized and what it is right now. So here is the uh, table that I wanted to show you. Uh, as you can see, on October 2015th, uh, they entered into a, a deal with each other, both CRISPR and Vertex. And um, uh, the deal was gene editing collaboration uh, and Vertex gains rights to license up to six targets. At that time, the targets were not identified and Vertex paid $105 million upfront, including $13 million of equity purchase in CRISPR therapeutics. And it agreed to pay milestones of up to $420 million on any target licensed with costs and sales to be shared equally on any target taken for forward in hemoglobinopathies. And sickle cell disease and uh, TDT are hemoglobinopathies. And it also says CRISPR will be leading the US commercialization. So friends, remember this part very clearly because Europe is uh, all clear for um, uh, CRISPR IP. So I don't think Vertex is going to face any problems out there. The issue is what is CRISPR going to do when it tries to commercialize it in US? So I think the heavy lifting has to be done by CRISPR here. This is my personal opinion, not financial advice. And I would like to hear from you guys what you think. Please put your, uh, uh, your thoughts in the comment below. Next, in December 2017, CTX001 was selected as the first gene-edited therapy to be developed. And if you recollect, CTX001 was later renamed Exacel, and it's now branded as Casgevy in Europe. And I suppose that it will be the same brand used in uh, US as well. And there were no new uh, terms or anything announced, so I'm assuming that the terms remained unchanged at that time in 2017. And fast forward, April 2021, the deal was amended to give Vertex global lead on development, manufacturing, and commercialization. Uh, sharing revised from 50% to now 60% share of costs and profits in favor of Vertex. And for that extra 10% share, um, Vertex paid $900 million to CRISPR therapeutics plus potential 200 million milestone on first regulatory approval. So this 200 million will be coming in to CRISPR 
as soon as the approval takes place tomorrow. So that's how uh, the deal was restructured. And now when we talk about uh, deal amended to give Vertex global lead on development, manufacturing and commercialization. So when, I, when we talk about global, and we have um, the October 2015 deal saying that CRISPR will lead commercialization in uh, US. Uh, so I am thinking that global means everything other than US. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, please put your uh, comments below on this issue so that we can have some clarity out here. So basically, if uh, Vertex uh, is going to take care of global and CRISPR has to commercialize it in US, CRISPR is the one which will be facing the uh, IP challenge with the Broad Institute if it, that, if it does happen. So that's the first point I wanted to make with uh, this particular table. And also you can see uh, that um, CRISPR is going to get 40% of the profit share. Next, if you look at this particular chart, um, this talks about uh, how much market share uh, is there for beta thalassemia and how much market share is there for sickle cell disease. So this is the second number that we need to remember. Of course, I don't expect CRISPR and uh, Vertex to convert all of them on day one. But suffice to say that there's a large addressable uh, population in US and EU. These are US and EU numbers. This does not include the rest of the world. This is just US and EU. Assuming that this goes ahead in the European Union, um, I don't know if EMA has yet approved. I don't think they have. They will also be following suit because UK has already approved. And if FDA does, uh, EMA won't be far behind. But we are looking at a total of uh, 450,000 plus patients between EU and US. So we'll revisit this number later on. I want to show you something else also. Here is an article from CNBC. And the reason I have picked up this uh, article is because for the first time we are having a number out here. Vertex Pharmaceuticals and CRISPR Therapeutics co-developed the, co the treatment which could cost around $2 million per patient. So we are looking at 2 million per patient out here, which means Bluebird Bio is also going to come in the same ballpark. So we have an idea of what kind of revenues these two companies would make. So that is amazing and astounding. Um, we don't know who is going to pay that 2 million, but if we were to assume uh, that uh, 2 million is going to be paid, and if we were to look at this chart here, 450,000 uh, patients who are addressable, and if you take even 1% of it, that's a huge potential. And out of the 2 million, uh, I think we, we can expect 40% of profits to come over to CRISPR therapeutics. So from the 2 million, we have to deduct costs and everything. We don't know the cost metrics about uh, this uh, particular therapy, and we don't even know whether uh, per dose manufacturing cost is going to be uh, in the millions or is it going to be in the thousands or hundred thousands. So we have no idea about that. So it's difficult to make a call on that. But we are looking at high numbers. And that brings me to the conclusion that in any case, the bottom line is that, first of all, CRISPR is going to get around $200 million right away. Uh, before the end of the year, hopefully, for having uh, got approval for CRISPR therapeutics. They already did that in UK. Maybe that itself would have triggered the 200 million payout. So that's point number one. And point number two is that this is going to immediately increase the EPS uh, for CRISPR therapeutics. If you look at the history of CRISPR therapeutics EPS, let me take you to another chart. This is in uh, Yahoo Finance. And you can see the basic EPS right? Uh, in 2019, uh, they were 1.23 uh, per share. And then again, the second time it was positive was in 2021. All this coincides with payments made by Vertex to CRISPR therapeutics, which is what boosted the EPS. And is, uh, without that, they have been in the negative, minus 5.29 in 2020. And um, right now, again, we are in minus 5.29. But this is going to pick up, and instead of uh, evaluating CRISPR therapeutics as a not, not profit-making company and using price to sales, we'll start using uh, the EPS as a benchmark for uh, valuing CRISPR therapeutics, and that could boost the value of uh, CRISPR therapeutics. And friends, 
I have been talking about $80 as a target. Uh, that seems to be in the lower end because many analysts believe that it could go as high as $87 to $89 per share for CRISPR therapeutics. So that's how the market is looking at it. And I thought I need to bring these information uh, to your um, notice because uh, we have been talking about CRISPR for a while, but we did not check how the original deal had um, uh, changed. So now CRISPR gets only 40% of the profits. And I still think that CRISPR is going to have challenges uh, commercializing the therapy in uh, uh, in the US. And we will get to know whether Broad Institute is going to mood for compromise and uh, what that compromise is going to cost. Uh, but still, on the US side, I think uh, uh, good revenues will, uh, on the European side, I think good revenues will be coming. And 40% of that will accrue to uh, CRISPR therapeutics. So that's what I'm thinking. The next topic I want to talk to you about is the uh, fear of uh, mutations and uh, cancers uh, due to um, therapies like uh, uh, Exacel. So I'm taking this from an article. Uh, I'm going to show you the article first. I'll also put the link in the uh, description below. Uh, so that's another piece of information that we have to keep in mind because it's kind of contingent liabilities. But remember, when we have um, ailments like uh, sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, which is really hard on patients, and when the current standard of care uh, is uh, not providing as much relief uh, and does not free the patient to live a normal life, uh, then FDA will definitely uh, look forward to anything that is a much better improvement over the current condition. And in that process, a few risks are accepted by FDA. And then, uh, based on the risk, the, uh, the companies can go about trying to mitigate it by modifying their uh, the therapy uh, to make sure that the risks are minimized. So I'll talk about that. First, let me show you the article. Well, friends, this is the uh, article I was talking about. It's in medical press. I'll put a link to this article in the description so that you can go and have a look for a look at it yourself. The title is New Research uh, Advances Understanding of Cancer Risk in Gene Therapies. This is by University of York. It's published on November 16, 2023, and it's based on uh, partly on uh, a study published in uh, Nature Medicine. And they are looking at sickle cell disease uh, uh, gene therapies. So the present study looked at samples from six patients with sickle cell disease who were undergoing gene therapy as part of a major clinical trial at Boston Children's Hospital. The research brought together an international team of experts to take a closer look at the genetic changes in the stem cells of patients before and after gene therapy and compare the cells that were modified with the therapy to those that weren't. The study highlights the importance of long-term and in-depth monitoring of stem cell samples from patients with genetic conditions to track mutations that could lead to blood cancer. And that was the focus. So the gist of this article uh, is basically that if you are going to clean out the bone marrow of a patient and then you're going to put um, uh, new, um, uh, new stem cells in there, then some of them may have some mutation and that gets amplified. So that's the kind of uh, gist of what they are saying here. If you read this particular paragraph, it says, our research indicates that gene therapy imposes a selection of different blood stem cells, the seed cells of our blood and immune system. After gene therapy, the treatment might favor growth of stem cells with certain mutations, and this in turn could potentially lead to expansion of blood cells containing these mutations. In other settings, such as expansions have been associated with development of blood cancers, particularly in older individuals. But the relationship of these studies finding to the risk of blood cancers is not fully understood. And the researchers use new techniques in genome science that allow blood cells to be tracked and compared in patients, a new approach which would substantially influence gene therapy trials in future. There are a few more conclusions, which makes me feel that uh, the sickle cell therapy can be Im uh, improved in order to reduce uh, these kind of uh, risks. So it says, notably our study revealed that younger patients with fewer genetic mutations in their stem cells didn't exhibit strong signs of mutations post-therapy. This suggests that treating patients with gene therapy at a younger age could be both safer and more effective, but substantial work needs to be done to test this formally. So uh, I think that um, uh, we need to keep this under advisement that these kind of risks exist, but then younger children uh, would be able to do much better. So the way I understand it is that as we grow older, our uh, 
uh, the the stem cells in our body they keep on uh, creating blood cells and other things and some of them mutate and if uh, if crispr therapeutics were to pick up those and modify them and um, and then uh, multiply them and clean the bone marrow and put that back into the body uh, that's where i think the amplification happens whereas if the original uh, bone marrow was as it is with the original stem cells then uh, i i suppose uh, that the mutations that happened after the blood cells were formed uh, would then uh, die out in the normal process but now they are getting installed in the bone marrow that's something uh, i i think this article is trying to say guys you know i am not a scientist but this is what makes logical sense to me uh, so uh, one of the ways uh, this risk could probably be uh, i think uh, mitigated to a good extent uh, would be to do a quality control check on the cells that are harvested prior to genetically modifying them to become casgev or exacel or whichever uh, treatment that is being done where bone marrow is cleared and uh, new cells are put in uh, to seed the bone marrow and uh, start creating new blood cells so any therapy of that kind is going to attract this risk and uh, the quality control might have to be stepped up a little more in the sense that there will be screening have to be done to eliminate uh, uh, cells which are mutated uh, so that they don't become a part of the final infusion that goes back into the patient mm-hmm. and that can have a much superior outcome so i don't think this is any kind of a show stopper uh, of uh, any sort but uh, i would say that uh, for that matter even when um, bone marrow transplant is done uh, to treat leukemias uh, the same risk could come up out there as well with the same logic um, and um, i i think this is not a big deal as far as crispr therapeutics is concerned i would be more worried about the uh, efforts to commercialize exacel in the united states because that's where i think um, we're going to have a jump start in litigation uh, everything will become clear uh, on monday uh, once uh, the approval is received and uh, commercialization plans for us is announced so with that my friends i would like to bring this video to an end i hope you like this video in this channel we try to do a deep dive into most of the topics uh, and um, uh, if you like this video please do not hesitate to put a like out there because that helps the channel uh, the youtube algorithm to promote the channel to people like yourself who want to see contents like this so it's not just technical and fundamental analysis we are talking about details of uh, gene therapies in this channel so uh, i would like more people to be able to get benefit of this your support is uh, much appreciated with that my friends i'd like to bring this video to an end and i'll catch up with you again in the next video